Okay, so you want to know how to make video resources, video lessons either for live streaming or as a recorded video that you can upload to Google Classrooms or similar software. Um, I am going to show you how you can do that. It's actually pretty easy. Um, if you don't have a webcam, obviously you won't be able to record your face. Um, not necessarily a problem. Um, you don't have to use the webcam to record your face. You could use the webcam to record you um, marking work or something like that. You know, if you if you're um, uh, doing something handwritten or visual. Um, obviously, you need that hardware in order to uh, in order to get that up there. But if you don't have a um, webcam, as long as you've got a microphone. Um, you know, you can uh, you you can make these videos. That's that's no problem. Uh, I've got a fancy headset. You don't necessarily need a fancy headset. Um, you should. I mean, if you've got a laptop, they usually have a built-in webcam and microphone, so you should be all right. Uh, you should be all right there. Uh, there is a piece of software that you're going to need to download, which is called OBS Studio, the Open Broadcaster software. Um, and it is available at obsproject.com so if you head over there it's totally free um, you can download it for Windows, uh, Mac or Linux um, although if you're installing it for Linux you might be better off seeing if your uh, package manager has a version in there um, I'm assuming if you're using Linux though you probably already know how to do this stuff um, the Windows links that you've got here um, it should it should automatically detect the version that you want. I would imagine that most of you, if you're using an anyway modern uh, computer, will want the uh, um, the 64-bit version. Uh, so you just download that file and install it. Um, I obviously have already downloaded and installing it because that's what I'm using to record this stuff right now. Uh, so install the um, uh, the software. You might have to reboot your computer, uh, but once it's installed open it up. Now I'm going to show you um, what it looks like. Um, you may get a crazy Hall of Mirrors effect. Uh, please don't be put off by that. Uh, so here we go. Um, right, you can see here this is what my OBS Studio looks like. Uh, the bit up here, this this window, uh, this is showing what is actually going to be recorded. So everything that's in this screen is actually going to be in your video. Obviously, because I've moved the OBS window into the captured screen area, uh, we've got this never-ending uh, infinity maze thing going on there. It's very Inception. Um, don't worry about that. Obviously, yours won't won't look like that. Um, so let's just have a look at what's going on down here. Um, you can create multiple different scenes, but you probably won't need to do that. You'll probably just need to set one of them up. You can see I've got different um, scenes set up for when I'm doing my learning live streams, uh, when I'm uh, doing just general YouTube stuff, and uh, this stuff that I've set up specifically for this tutorial. Now, the way that it works is you have to add a source for any image uh, or similar that you want to appear on your screen. So you can see here I have already a bunch of sources. When you first start using this software, uh, you will probably just have a single scene and there'll be no sources in there, it'll just be black. So my sources, I've got a background image, okay? That's the background image. I'm just going to move that to the front. You can see it's over the top of everything else in my list. You can drag these things around. Anything at the top of the list will be drawn over the top of anything below it. Um, so my background image, all I did to add that was uh, I clicked on the Add button here. Uh, he says without actually being able to see what's going on. On the Add button there, and uh, there is a uh, Image option. Um, when I click on that, we have the option to select a um, select an e existing image. Um, you you've got to give it a name. Um, I called mine background, um, so you know you could call it. Uh, I'm going to call it another background. Uh, the cool thing about doing this is that um, you can once you set these things up, you can use them in other scenes as well. Uh, you'll notice I've already got all of these things that I've uh, that I've already created. Uh, if I go to OK now, um, you can browse for the image file that you want to use. Um, so let's go to my uh, my downloads here. 
Uh, what about this one? Oh, look, it's an animated picture of me driving a tank. Um, so if you want to have that as your image, uh, you go to OK, and uh, then it appears on your on your screen in a little red box. You can drag it out so you can increase the size of it if you want to, you know. Um, so you can have uh, you can have something that looks like that. Um, but yeah, you, I mean, you can you can play around and resize that if you want to um, stretch it or squish it. Uh, if you hold down Shift while dragging these handles around, uh, you can um, you can move it around without uh, any regard for maintaining aspect ratio. But if you just click and drag, it will automatically make sure the the width and height stay as they should be. Okay, so that's adding images. Um, I recommend uh, creating an image uh, for your background. You'll notice I've turned my background image off by clicking on the little eye icon. The little eye icon um, sets the visibility. So I can turn the uh, the picture of me driving a tank, turn that off there, um, and I can turn my background image back on. Uh, and there it is. I'm going to move the background way back down here. Okay. So. Uh, setting up a background image is one thing. If you want to add a picture of your face as well via the webcam, uh, that is done using video capture device. And the way that it works is essentially the same thing. You go to add, you select video capture device, um, and then you will have the option to select uh, whatever whatever webcam uh, you you have selected. It's it's pretty straightforward. You shouldn't run into any problems there. Now the the more complicated bit is what we've got um, going on uh, over here. Uh, that's called the display capture. So let's just have a look at what's going on here. The display capture is set to uh, capture anything that's in this part of the screen. Um, so you can't see exactly what my desktop looks like at the moment because I've set the uh, the system to only capture a small part of my desktop. I can add another display capture. If I click on the, uh, the plus and I go to display capture, uh, let's create a new one. I'll call it example. OK, go to OK. By default, it will fill uh, your entire desktop. Um, so if I click OK here, you can see that's what my desktop currently looks like. Uh, I've got background image from a video game that I've been playing and I've got all of this extra stuff over here um, and uh, generally you probably won't won't want most people seeing that stuff right so how do we shrink it down how do we crop it out so we only get uh, the bit that we need well it's super duper simple um, you can see here I called it example if you right click on there you should get the option to go to um, filters. If you click on filters, um, I'm hoping that is still, yes, that's still there. Uh, if you go to filters, um, you will be able to add a filter. Um, the one that you want is crop and pad. Okay, crop and pad, um, I'll just keep the name the same. Um, you can trim off bits from the left, uh, bits from the top, bits from the right, bits from the bottom, and this is all um, done in pixels. So if you want to very painfully uh, trim off uh, bits from the left-hand side, you can see them uh, gradually disappearing on the left-hand side and everything else sort of resizes, uh, but maybe you want to enter it like a little bit quicker. Let's trim off, I don't know, uh, a thousand pixels from the from the side there. Uh, that's um, practically half my screen. Well, it's just over half my screen. Okay, and then you can do the same for the uh, for the top, uh, for the uh, for the right, for the bottom, um, and then eventually you'll get to the point where one area of your screen is the view window, if you like. So you can have lots of other apps open, just not in the view window, and then anything you want to appear in the um, anything that you want to appear in the uh, video, you just move into that view area. Okay, um, it's going to make sense when you're actually up and running with it. So uh, what I recommend you do is follow along with this video as you're setting the uh, setting the stuff up. Um, so one thing that I will point out, you can see on my um, 
I'm just going to move OBS back over here. Uh, you can see on mine, uh, my web browser is filling uh, the section of the screen that I had partitioned off. Um, probably don't need to have all of these tabs in view or I mean it's it's worth cropping it so that you've just got the relevant bits okay so if I just um, once again double click on um, my uh, display capture uh, if I double click on my display capture um, no I mean right click don't I I right click on the display capture and I go to uh, filters uh, down the bottom there. Um, I can adjust these things. Um, I probably want to adjust it so that I can't see the top of the um, of the web browser there. Um, so let's just have a uh, have a quick play around with that. I'll keep on trimming the top off, get rid of those um, get rid of those unnecessary bits and you'll see that eventually we get to the bit where we've just got all the juicy bits that we want okay so trying to keep nothing but the the relevant uh, stuff on the screen is probably uh, is is probably what you want to do okay so obviously at this stage you're going through you're setting up your um, you're setting up your uh, your window uh, so that you've got an area of the screen which is going to be the bit that appears in the video Okay. Now, there's obviously more sophisticated ways of doing it, but I'm I'm showing you guys the easiest way to get up and running quickly. And I'm sure there's probably experienced streamers and stuff that are watching this and thinking, "Oh, there's a better way of doing that." Is it? Yes, there is. Okay, I'm well aware of that, but we need to get things up and running as quickly as we can. Okay. So anyway, let's just uh, I'm going to move this uh, um, back out the way just to highlight something because I trimmed off the top of the um, the area you'll notice that down the bottom um, the 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 window size has adjusted to to meet that so I might have to adjust the the bottom as well unless unless you wanted that bar but another thing that you could do is you could um, resize the um, the window so that it just stretches it out as you resize this stuff it doesn't change the uh, the area of your desktop which is captured uh, all it does is expand the bit that's been uh, that's been captured into the, uh, the the position that you want. Okay, so obviously, video is one thing, but sound is super important. Um, the eagle-eyed among you will probably have noticed that I have a mic stroke aux um, input here. You need to get an input field uh, for your uh, for your audio, otherwise. Um, no one's going to hear anything you say. Uh, again, same way that you add them, just like everything else, you click on the plus down the bottom and there is audio input capture. All right, so you want audio input capture. Um, I've already got one called Mike Aux, but just to show you what it might look like, let's create a new one. When you select device, uh, it's going to give you a whole bunch of options uh, depending on what sound system you've got set up in your computer. Uh, as you can see, I've got a, a silly expensive sound card, or it was expensive at the time, probably not anymore. Um, but there's a whole bunch of different options that I can choose from there. You might just have one. You might just have microphone. Okay, and that's fine. The important thing is that you choose the right microphone. You can see here I've got microphone. This is the microphone that I've got plugged into um, the the sound um, input on my computer. And then down here, this is the microphone that is built into my webcam. So just make sure that you select the uh, select the right one. Okay. Um, once you've done that, uh, in fact, let's set up the uh, the thing with the audio input from the webcam. This might sound, this might make it sound uh, absolutely awful, but Hey, let's do it for science. So we select the HD webcam there, uh, go to OK, and if it's working, you should see down the bottom or wherever in this in this area, you should see as you talk or as you make a noise, you should see these bars uh, moving up and down. Now, um, if the bars are consistently going into the red area, that's going to sound really awful. It's going to start clipping. Um, so you might want to adjust the volume uh, with this. You can. 
I'm probably going to sound a lot quieter now uh, and a lot louder now. So adjust that until, uh, generally speaking, it's not clipping. All right. Now I'm going to get rid of my second audio input capture. Uh, I apologise if the sound quality at the moment is kind of terrible. It's going to get rid of uh, get rid of uh, that. Yes. Okay. Um, you'll also have noticed that there's this thing called uh, desktop audio here. Uh, well, I've got two audio input captures. Uh, I can get rid of that one there, I don't want that. Okay, uh, there's this desktop audio, what's that? Well, when your computer makes a sound, uh, if you want it to also appear in your, uh, in your video, um, you, can, um, you can turn that on. For instance, if I adjust the volume of my uh, thing here, um, I don't know whether that sound actually made it into the video because I don't actually have a uh, desktop audio capture feed on my sources so I could see it going up and down there let's just let's just double check um, audio output capture is the one that you want um, so if I create a new one here again you might have a whole bunch of different things that appear especially if you've got a uh, Nvidia graphics card because they have built-in sound um, you want um, whatever one you would normally use uh, for your sound output. In my uh, instance, it's speakers. In yours, it's probably also going to be speakers, but um, if it doesn't work with one of them, try it with a different one. Okay, so now uh, you can see I've got that audio output capture there as well. Uh, and when I adjust this sound, you can see it's also uh, adjusted, adjusted there. Okay, uh, so I'm going to get rid of that audio output capture there. Okay, so um, make sure that you have got a space where um, a space on your screen um, which is going to show the relevant bits that you need to broadcast. Um, make sure that you have got a uh, a bit. Um, on your in your sources uh, with either your video input device or your um, uh, well definitely with your with your audio input if you need to get uh, audio input in there okay now obviously you can test all of this stuff out by making a sample recording right um, I'm going to introduce you now to the um, the recording options. You'll notice over here it says stop recording. Um, that normally says start recording if you're not recording a video, but obviously I'm recording a video at the moment so it, I can't show you exactly what it looks like so I'd have to stop the video and start it again. You see what, see what I'm getting at here. Um, so um, you will need to play around with some settings. Um, I can give you some guidance on what those settings might be. They're going to vary depending on what your um, what your hardware setup is. Okay, so I click on settings. Um, here we go. Um, most of this stuff you won't have to touch, right? Um, output is the one that we're interested in right now, and you'll notice there's a number of different tabs. Don't worry about streaming at the moment. Recording, that's the thing um, that you need to um, uh, to set. It's actually pretty straightforward. Recording format, um, I find leaving that on FLV makes um, systems like Google uh, Classroom and YouTube encode the videos a lot quicker. Um, my desktop resolution is um, 2560 by 1440, uh, which is larger than most. Uh, standard HD resolution is 1920 by 1080. Uh, if you want to uh, rescale the size of your screen. Make sure that you've got this uh, selected and you've and you've set the size uh, set the size there. But generally speaking, if you've got something set up like this, uh, you should be uh, you should be fine. Uh, the recording path uh, that is uh, the location where your videos are going to appear once you've recorded them. Uh, you can see I've set up a, a folder called videos, and inside there I've got my tutorial folder where the uh, where the videos uh, will will go. Um, in terms of, uh, you can see here, encoder, use stream encoder. Um, the stream encoder that I've got is X264. Um, it's, if you set set your thing up like this, uh, you will you will tend to have uh, uh, decent results. However, bear in mind I have a very fast internet connection, so my bit rate is set very high. Um, if you don't have a fast internet connection and you want to stream, 
uh, you might have to reduce the resolution so rescale the output um, to uh, to something smaller and and down downsize the the bit rate to maybe uh, uh, maybe 8000 okay basically if you try to stream and uh, people complain that it's choppy or it's not working properly uh, then you might have to uh, cut your bit rate um, but that's something that I can help you out with on a uh, on a on a one to one basis if if necessary uh, there is a little formula that you can calculate based on your um, uh, on your upload speed I imagine most of you are probably just going to be recording videos rather than doing the whole live streaming thing um, but there you go you shouldn't have to touch the audio thing um, I've set all my audio bit rates to 160 I think that's the default I haven't bothered changing any of that uh, replay buffer nope um, leave that leave that unticked um, yeah, there you go that's uh, that that should that should sort you out in terms of the settings um, I will come back to uh, stream here um, video right so video the base resolution that's that's your screen resolution if you're running standard HD monitor your screen resolution is probably 1920 by 1080 um, but if you're on a laptop it might be smaller than that okay um, so this is this base resolution this is the size of your of your screen Right, you can find out the size of your screen um, by uh, right-clicking on the desktop and selecting um, display settings. You'll get something uh, that looks like this, um, and uh, down here, display resolution. Um, that will that will tell you what your your screen size is. The output resolution is the uh, the resolution that you want to uh, to output your video in. I keep mine at 1920 by 1080 because that's standard HD um, resolution. Um, set it to to whatever you want, basically. Uh, you shouldn't really have to touch much of the uh, much of the other stuff. Everything else should should work. Now I appreciate I'm showing you a whole bunch of stuff here, and you might think, "Oh God, he said it was easy." Um, it's one of those things where if you set things up the way that I've got them set up. It's probably just going to work. You won't have to. Uh, you won't have to mess around um, too much. Okay. So obviously, when you've got everything set up and you are ready to start recording, you just hit start recording, and then in the folder that you've set up um, to show your uh, um, your recordings, you will have. Uh, a new video. You can see um, I've these are my my test recordings here um, of uh, of previous videos. They are labelled according to the date and the time. Um, so once you've finished recording, you know where to find your videos. You can review them, make sure they look um, all right, and then uh, and then jobs are good. Un. Okay. So um, that is about it for recording video. Uh, let's have a look at my notes here. I said where to get OBS. I've done that. How to set up the screens. I've done that. Uh, recording settings. I've just gone through that. And making a recording. Uh, I've just gone through that. Um, uploading to Google Drive. Um, uploading to Google Drive is super duper simple. Um, all you have to do is go to Google Drive. Um, you go to the folder where you want to uh, to upload stuff. Um, so maybe let's go to the computer science and multimedia folder here for example click on new click on file upload and then you just have to find uh, the file uh, that you created so here's one of those videos I double click on that file you can see it is now uploading uh, once it's uploaded uh, it will appear in your list of files um, it will you can see it's there um, it will do some processing so that you can view it um, in Google Drive. Um, adding it to the Google Classroom, you just add it in exactly the same way that you'd add any other material. Um, bear in mind, when you add it to the Google Classroom, it'll take a little while to process, but once it has processed, uh, students should be able to just view it as if it's an embedded YouTube video. Okay, I mean that's all there is uploading to Google Drive. You can even you don't even have to go through all of that rigmarole. You can just drag and drop uh, 
the files and they will upload okay um, and then you can see here oh look there's that there's that video it's still it's still processing the video check check back later it says fine fine we'll, we'll check that later okay so that's recording a video and that is uploading it now the more tricky part is doing a live stream not least because obviously uh, you've got to be on the ball as to what's actually going on and you can't sort of uh, go back and edit out your mistakes not that I've made any mistakes in this video and this has been one continuous take um, and as you can imagine right now I am pretty tired that's why I'm drinking this amazing coffee that's not a sponsorship deal by the way I'm not going to try and promote anything here um, so let's just have a let's just have a look. I showed you the um, I showed you the settings that you need. Now there's one other thing that you need to uh, ne that you need to do when it comes to streaming. Um, in the stream setting, um, depending on what service you are using, you need to set things up. Now I would imagine that what you are going to be using is YouTube. So set up just select uh, YouTube you should have primary YouTube ingest server as an option there and then this thing here stream key now the stream key is a unique key that you have tied to your um, YouTube account um, and you need to make sure that you keep that safe because if anyone has that streaming key even if they don't have access to your YouTube account they will be able to stream directly onto your uh, onto your YouTube channel which is not fun okay so how do you get that well this is what you do okay so um, you should have a YouTube account okay um, all, all Warriner staff have a, uh, uh, a Google account uh, which means that they all have a, uh, a, a YouTube account as well. Um, log into your YouTube account, and then if you click on Home, yeah, it will take you. It will take you home, and there'll be a spattering of bizarre recommendation. For, for videos and whatnot uh, but then there's this little icon over here create a video and more right if you click on that there's an option to go live right if you, it, obviously if you've previously recorded a video you can upload that video and add it to your YouTube channel it's really really straightforward I'm not going to bother going through that because it, it's if, if you've ever used a website before you should be able to do that no problem so let's click on go live and what happens is it takes you to the YouTube studio. You can see here I've got some settings that I previously used for a uh, for a live stream that I did. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select new stream. Okay, so you click new stream and then you can give it a title. Uh, let's say I'm going to call this GCSE Computer Science um, live stream. Okay, now. You can set it to public or you can set it to private. Obviously, the first time round, highly recommend setting it to private. I mean, that's what I'm going to do right now as this example. Add a description. This is just a test. There we go. Uh, category, education, obviously. Um, you can upload a custom thumbnail if you want. Um, I tend not to bother uh, but if you've got a, a specific title um, that you that you want for your stream uh, then you can upload that uh, that image it's just a case of finding the image and um, and uploading it I'm scared aren't we all uh, let's just go to my to my so maybe I want to use this BBC micro bit uh, picture like that uh, okay I double click on that and that will be the thumbnail that appears um, in the in the in the listings okay um, is this video made for kids right kids according to US law are children under 13 years old okay so that's that you can view the guidance there uh, for the most part my stuff is not made for kids so I can click no it's not made for kids I don't need any age restrictions um, now when you click create stream you won't go live straight away which is uh, which is the important thing okay you click on create stream and you end up with a whole bunch of stuff here okay um, now you've got three tabs stream settings you've got analytics you've got stream health when you're actually streaming these tell you um, whether or not you're um, uh, 
you know your your viewers are actually here concurrent viewers tell you how many people are watching stream health tells you whether or not your internet connection is fast enough to deal with the amount of data that you're throwing out there uh, the stream settings are the bits that you um, that you need right stream key here I am not gonna click this button here uh, because that would make the stream key visible never ever make your stream key visible just click on copy okay and that will copy the stream key okay and then back in OBS in the settings right in the stream settings you can paste your stream key into the stream key box okay you go to OK and now that means that OBS is linked to your um, your stream that you've got up and up and going okay um, the stream URL that's a um, that's a URL that you can link to in order to um, uh, in order to view what's going on. Um, latency, I recommend if you're trying to do live lessons setting latency to ultra low latency that means that there'll be um, uh, less of a delay between the stuff that you do um, in real life and the uh, the stuff that people see. Uh, with ultra low latency you're talking a delay of about five or ten seconds uh, with normal latency it's around 20 seconds so obviously you want uh, you want that you want that very low. Additional settings enable DVR don't know if I... oh yeah DVR I think uh, records the um, the input from the chat box um, which is which is pretty good because it means that if it um, once you finish streaming that video can then stay on YouTube and uh, anyone watching it back will also see the um, uh, the input from uh, from the users uh, in the in the text stream probably don't need 360 degree video um, probably you know, I mean you, you can you can set these things as you as you need to okay so once you're ready to go live all you have to do is click on the start streaming button in OBS there it is just above the uh, the start recording now here's the thing I've never tried recording and streaming at the same time so here's a new thing for me uh, so I'm gonna hit start streaming and allegedly I'm streaming now um, and if I uh, just go back to uh, to Google uh, live streaming isn't available at the moment okay well there's a there's a bit of an error let's try again um, don't know whether that's an issue with Google or um, or, or what's going on there um, live streaming isn't available at the moment try again no okay um, maybe they've introduced some restrictions to stop um, the bandwidth um, issues I heard on the news that are that that thing so that might uh, I don't know I'll test it again later but anyway that's that's all you do um, so you know that's 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 pretty much it um, allegedly I'm still streaming um, although I don't actually see a thing. I'm just going to test something out here. Um, this is this is me doing things for science. When what I really should be doing is wrapping this video up because you're probably all bored by now. Um, that's that. Let's keep it private. Um, blah blah blah. And no, it's not made for kids. Let's create a stream. Um, dun, 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 dun. doing anything if I hit stop streaming and then start streaming again mm. Mm, probably not gonna work today well that's a little bit of a pain because I can't actually show you the uh, uh, the rest of it but hey at least at least you should be able to get up and running with the software uh, and you should be able to um, to download um, or sorry you should be able to create a video and then upload it um, as necessary okay um, if you have any problems let me know uh, I will try and fix them um, please do not be put off by the fact there's a whole bunch of settings like I said once you start adding these bits it's super duper simple to uh, to get them uh, set up the way that you want them set up okay 
Um, it's going to finally one one final try here. Let's edit my stream settings. Put that down there. Go to OK, and then let's. Try it now. Oh! Says we've got an excellent connection. That seems better than before. Uh, right, here we go. So, um, once you get that connection, once everything's sort of up and running, uh, you can click Go Live over here and then. Uh, it will say going live. What you see here is what people are actually going to see once you're streaming. Boom, there we go. Um, you are, you're live. Um, he says, uh, if I just copy that URL, let's go here, see what we can see. Um, okay, so it's feeding in apparently um, cool anyway that's that's that in a nutshell I'm not sure what waiting for mix means um, yeah anyway um, going to end the stream. Once you've finished, you can end the stream there. Yes, end that stream. Um, and then, oh, apparently it did It did have something there. It did have something there. Um, who knows whether that actually worked or not. Okay, um, so take your time with it. Give us a shout if you run into any problems. Uh, once it's set up, um, it, it will be ready to go the next time so you only have to go through the rigmarole of setting up all of your stuff once and then everything should just work the next time it should just be a, a case of just going start recording and then you can do your thing you know uh, yeah, so it's it's a little bit of hard work to start off after that you should be grand alright um, that's that <laughs>